Greetings fellow learners, my name is Dave Katz and I'm an outdoor educator based in the Finger Lakes region of New York. This region is known for its beautiful waterfalls and gorges and today we've set off on a field trip to explore the Trumansburg Creek watershed from the headwaters to the outlet in Cayuga Lake. Over the last 15 years I've worked with students ranging from 5th to 12th grade, mostly in an experiential setting. My overall teaching mission is to encourage curiosity about our amazing planet, its natural history, its human cultures, and its varied geography. Additionally, I believe that through first-hand exploration, one can find motivation to take action towards change. The first phase of our activity started with the question, what is a watershed? And that led us to the National Geographic Resource Library, where we learned a little bit about the Mississippi River watershed, as well as the Yangtze River watershed, the Nile, and a couple of other global watersheds, including the Amazon. From there, we headed over to the USGS website called TopoView, and downloaded three digital 1 to 24,000 scale maps Using our computer, we aligned those three maps and we drew a red line over the main water course, which is Trumansburg Creek, and we measured it at 18 miles. We then identified 10 locations along the main water course that we wanted to visit that would help characterize our watershed, both from a natural and a human standpoint. So after accumulating all of that information, we were ready to head out into the field and explore and learn. We put our mud boots on, and we headed out into the field to document some of the things that we had studied. Starting from a broad perspective, the overarching theme is to use watersheds as a fabric for gaining understanding about the water cycle, both on a local, regional, and global scale. In our local example, Trumansburg Creek watershed eventually becomes part of the Finger Lakes region, which is eventually part of the Great Lakes region, and eventually part of the Atlantic Ocean. To encourage the explorer's mindset, we have invited our students to join an exploratory adventure, providing a new and somewhat challenging experience. Acting on our curiosity has led us on this adventure, and we have persisted in the case of a few minor challenges. We navigated muddy trails and figured out the safest way to cross the stream. During our field trip, we used binoculars to make observations of wild animals, and we also use the helpful Seek app by iNaturalist to help us aid in identifying at least one plant, including some invasive plants, in each location we visited. Having this as part of our project helped remind us to use our observation skills. We also practice some of our communication skills by taking photos and video recordings of all of the places that we went, and this will be used to share with the students who weren't able to attend. By visiting and studying a bit of the history of our village, we get a better idea of our shared history. We saw remnants of a mill, of an old railroad, an old transportation system, and of a cemetery of a town which actually no longer exists. Through first-hand experience, we have gained a better understanding of the Earth's water cycle, seeing how it flows through our local watershed, and also how an important interdependent relationship exists between Earth's ecosystems through water. We also had a chance today to observe wild animals and wild places, and also identify native plants and see some of their characteristics of how they interact with the environment. The day provided a few fun surprises. We discovered an abandoned goose egg floating in the pond. We used a log to cross a stream and we even found a large feather in the forest. This activity has offered me a unique opportunity to incorporate the National Geographic learning framework into how I would design future curriculum. After reaching the end of the exciting journey exploring the watershed from the headwaters to the outlet, I asked student Ozzy to share his impression, and to my surprise, this is what he said. Just like how crazy it is that a watershed starts off with 
just a little puddle. It could be like super small. And then it turns into something like Kiyugu Lake or Seneca Lake. And then that turns into the Atlantic, Pacific, all those big oceans. This was probably one of, if not the best day of my life. <laughs> really? Yeah, it was so fun. We have quite a few more spectacular watersheds in our local area that would be great to get out and explore in a similar fashion and perhaps add some other things to the experience like sampling water, doing an animal survey, or even making other short videos to share with other students. Thanks for having a look at my watershed activity and I would love to see what your watershed looks like in your home.